Hi, I'm Lee Chantel, and this presentation is about the um, research I'm doing this year on my psychology honours thesis, and it involves social robots and preschoolers. We have greater access to new technologies today, and one of these is social robots. Social robots are used in a variety of areas, including education, and they process information and create expected outcomes, such as engaging with humans in conversation. And this is known as human-robot interactions, or HRI. Their social aspects and their physical body enable social robots to play human roles, including gestures, vocalizations, and facial expressions. Child robot interaction differs from human robot interaction in a similar way that adults and children differ. Children have differences in language understanding, their level of attention, their developmental and their temperamental factors. Some examples are that children see robots as living beings and they would not notice processing issues that we might. So we are going to use this existing theory in a new direction in our research. The advantages of social robots for children is primarily theoretical and it's not accessed beyond studies that appear in conferences and journals dedicated to robotics. Past studies have focused on education and learning and not engagement, and a majority of studies focus on autistic children and teaching English as a second language. Previous research shows that children like social robots, they prefer to learn from them, and they have positive attitudes towards them. Therefore, we will be looking at preschoolers' overall engagement with a robot versus a human, and we'll be measuring this by their behavioural engagement, vocalisations and emotional engagement. Some HRI studies show that people engage more with robots than humans. Therefore, our first hypothesis is that children will be more engaged and attentive towards the social robot instructor rather than a human one. Previous research also shows a positive relationship between children's home use of robots and interactions in an educational setting. Therefore, our second hypothesis states that we will see positive relationship between children's previous experiences with technology and their engagement and communication with social robots. This is a multidisciplinary project that is focused on exploratory research. We have a combination of qualitative and quantitative methods that both address the same goal. We have survey data that is analysed quantitatively, which is used a lot in psychology. And we have beho behavioural observations, which are used a lot in education, and these are analysed qualitatively. We're using a within subjects or a repeated measures design where all participants receive both conditions. And these conditions are the um, interactions and the and these are made up of the independent variables, and this is the instructor type. So social robot instructor and human instructor. We have a heap of dependent variables, including behavioral and emotional engagement, vocalizations and words spoken, drawing, name writing, and the smileometer. We also have tools to measure the DVs, and these we call the interaction phases. And we have four different phases in our interaction made up of an introduction, Simon Says Game, drawing and writing, and a conclusion. As you can see from the screenshot, Simon Says Game has the most components and the others have less than that. Each of the sentences of the script equals one component. We have 47 typically developing English-speaking preschoolers who are aged 3 to 5 years from two preschools. The star of the show is the now humanoid social robot. And they have positive interactions with children in education. They have a humanoid body, which means human-like. They have a fixed face and movable arms. 
They have 25 degrees of freedom so they can perform a range of motor actions. And the way that they do this is with different aspects, including the microphones, speakers, and the cameras. And we have pre-programmed the movements, gestures, and speech based on the human. Now also has specific and pre-programmed voice that they use. For our behavioral observation, we have behavioral engagement. And this is where a child directly responds to a question or a direction. For example, what is your name? Or Simon says, put your hands up. Throughout the interaction, there are 19 components where a child will show behavioral engagement. And we use a score of one if the child has this engagement present, as in they're compliant, or a score of zero for non-compliance. We have emotional expressions, which is overt expressions of positive and negative emotions. Positive emotional engagement is smiling, clapping and laughing, whereas negative emotional engagement is yawning, frowning or shaking the head. We're interested in the different types and the totals for both of these components. And they're scored as present, one, or absent, zero. Then we have vocalizations and we have three different types here. We have task relevant, device relevant, and irrelevant. Task relevant vocalizations relate to the task at hand or the story. For example, I have a dog. Device relevant vocalizations are related to the devices that we use in the interaction. For example, with the now, the child might say, he's talking to me. Or they might say in regards to the iPad, how do I write? The irrelevant vocalizations have nothing to do with the device or the task or the interaction at all, such as time to eat. And these vocalizations are scored if they're present with a one and if they're absent with a zero. And we're interested in here, here with the type of vocalization and the overall total of these plus the overall total of number of words spoken. Here's an example of how we coded those behavioral observations with down the left hand side showing the different components of the interaction phases and how we have coded them with a one if it's, if it's present and a zero if it's absent, plus some other information as well. Then we have the drawing and name writing task where we've used a writing and drawing app on an iPad Pro and we've asked the children to draw a picture of a dog and to write their name. Both the drawings and the name writing are assessed with a seven point scale. And I've given you some examples here to show you that these are on the higher end of the scale where the letters of their names and their name are in, in order mostly and you can recognize the dog. The smileometer, which I love the name of, it measures the enjoyment and feedback of the child. And this was adapted from a three point scale and we added a couple more to prevent um, sensitivity to effects. And um, as you can see from the image that I created, the child either points or can vocalize the image that relates to what they thought about playing with now or what they thought about playing with Michelle today. Then we have the parent questionnaire, which was completed online. And it has questions along the lines of demographic information, child information, and information related to digital technology and robotic toys. And these things ask certain um, aspects of child's experience, the way the parent feels, how easy it is for the child to use, and the engagement frequency for both parent and child. And this was previously used in a few other studies, and we've just added the robot and robotic toy questions. So the research was approved originally by our ethics um, from Griffith and we were given permission from the managers of the preschools. Parents gave informed consent before the study as part of their online questionnaire that they filled in. 
and both interaction conditions were counterbalanced to control for order effects. So this meant that some children participated in both conditions on the same day, others one condition on the first day and the second on the next day, and they were mixed up what order they did, the human or the robot interactions. So with the actual interaction part, the preschoolers sat on a cushion in the corner of a quiet room facing the instructor. Verbal consent was gained when we asked, are you ready to play? And each interaction had the four phases that we've gone through before. And at the end, we've asked for immediate feedback with the smileometer. Each of these interactions was three minutes and it was filmed on video. We've got some analyses to come as um, we're currently in the interrater and comparing where we're at at the moment with that, but we're looking for a main effect of the instructor group. I'll be conducting within subjects and novas and two of those, one for the vocalizations and one for the emotional engagement. I'll also be doing a few repeated measures t-tests for the behavioural engagement, number of words spoken, drawing, name writing, and smileometer. Also be working out correlations for a variety of things such as previous technology experience, age, gender, and social economic status. So the predicted results are just based on previous research. And the HRI studies have previously shown that people engage more with robots than humans. That's why we had the hypothesis one. So we would hope to find a main effect of instructor group with the now interactions expected to show more engagement across all interaction phases. And then also based on the previous research showing positive relationship between children's home use of robots and their interaction in an educational setting, this was the basis of our second hypothesis. So we would expect to find a positive correlation between the level of children engagement with the robot and their previous home experience. There's just a few things I thought I'd share with you that I've noticed when I was coding. Um, the video interaction was that smiling and nodding are the most used positive emotional engagements and the most behavioural engagements come from phase two of the interaction, which is the Simon Says game. And there's not many vocalisations across the whole lot of data, but when someone was vocal, they said a hell of a lot. So the implications for this study is that findings will better inform researchers in education to whether preschoolers are more engaged with a social robot or a human. This helps inform future research to effectively use social robots to engage young children in educational settings and to positively support their early learning. Thank you for attention. I'm Lee Chantel and you can see the video on YouTube and the slides on SlideShare after this.